G'day, Gus from Wait Before You Drive. If you haven't had your caravan weighed, get your caravan weighed. You'll know whether you're legal, whether you've got insurance, and whether or not the caravan's gonna handle properly when you're pulling it. Anyway, today we're talking about uh, how, to get a, uh, how to get a Weber Q, Baby Q, into a uh, standard Tetford hatch that's round about 635 by 445 or something high, just a standard caravan hatch without disassembling it. It is possible, it's not possible on those legs, but it is possible if you make a chassis, drop the height and reduce the width and, and sort of recenter it a little bit, it is possible. So what did I do first? First of all, I uh, went to an engineer. He bent me up a U-shaped piece of metal like this. Just disregard those end bits for the moment. A U-shaped bit of metal like this in two mil steel. These sides were 50 mil high. The uh, inside to inside, because the legs will mount on the inside of that, was uh, 222 millimetres. And I then had him bend up two pieces of 25 by 25 angle, 220 long to make these bits up. Um, so I also, because of the, because I was then, it wasn't folded out of one piece, I had a radius on the 25 by 25 angle, which meant that this wouldn't butt up properly against it. So I just had to cut about a mil out of the bottom of this, not, not out of the sides, because I wanted the sides to stay the same. I just wanted the bottom where the radius was pulling in to be, to, uh, be um, removed a little bit so it would sit nice and flat on the 25 by 25 angles, which would give me the overall width of 560. I was working on 560 um, because that is the width of the 150% slides that are in my um, Elite Yield and Caravan. Now, the 150% slides, um, they look like this. So they actually go uh, come out of the um, come out of the uh, the um, out of the uh, caravan or whatever. One hundred and fifty percent of what they are closed. So four hundred closed open a meter. So that gives you tons of because the barbecue sits in at four hundred. So you pull it right out. It gives you tons of space or a bit of space for clearance around the back of the barbecue so you can lift the lid, it's not hitting the van. You've, you know, you've got to say, you know, 20 or 30 mil or whatever it is away from the van for um, air circulation, so that's all good. So if you haven't got a set of those, I made those out of, uh, out of, out of a, cheap, um, a cheap pair of uh, Bunning slides um, and uh, put them together myself. They're exactly the same ones as are in the Elite Caravans. Um, they don't support masses of weight, but they certainly will support a barbecue okay. And the one that's in my van is nearly 14 years old, still going strong. So I, I don't see any problem with using these. You know, the others are, you know, to buy these, they're ones that are really low rated. You could be looking at $450 per slide. Okay, so I digress. What you need to do, first of all, is establish a, like how you're going to mount it. So. With this, this is roughly, this piece here is roughly 20 mil, 25 mil high. So I mounted my 25 mil angle onto this because I knew that I have a clearance here of about 11 mil from the bottom of that mounting point to the bottom of the, of the slide where it pulls out. Because when it comes out, it needs to clear the lip on the, the little flange lip on the, um, on the uh, hatch. Okay, so that's about 11 mils from top to bottom. But if you've got already an elite, an elite caravan, you'll have, you probably have one of these slides with that terrible marine barbecue on it, okay? So the first thing you've got to do when you're making anything like this is establish a reference point, uh, and then you work from the reference point down. So in my case, I had the bits of metal bent, good. I knew that they would fit when they were joined up. That's all good. So then I needed my reference point, and because I've made one of these previously, I was able to use the reference point that I had previously established. So I'm not sure if that's showing up, but I'm this. This is the fifty, the fifty, the fifty mil uh, piece of uh, um, U-shaped material. You'll notice that I've had to cut a piece of it out 
in order to get the barbecue in because it was hitting on the bottom of the barbecue because it's like a sort of a bubbly shape. So the reference point is 18 mils along, not from the edge of this bit of material, but from the two mils, the, two, the, the outside edge where it mounts onto that track which goes into the slide, that little two mil piece there. So that's actually 78 millimetres to the centre of that hole and it's 40 millimetres up. That's your reference point. If you do that, um, if you do that, the whole thing will work. You do the same thing on the rear of the barbecue. You work on that 78 mils off, that, off, off this edge, but on the back edge there, and uh, 40 mil up. Then what I did, so then I once I drilled those holes, now I think those holes with the, I used the original screws from the Weber when I disassembled it, and um, because the Weber legs are actually threaded, and so you don't need any bolts, they'll actually um, they'll actually you screw back into them. Um, and I think I needed about a six mil drill bit to drill through the through the metal, uh, punch it and drill through, and then so I mounted it on the uh, at, on on in this point and at the back here. I mounted them first. Then I worked out, once it was mounted, and this is where it, it's a bit painful because you, you're putting it together and you're pulling it apart and putting it together. Then you work out where you're going to drill these holes. Same thing, front and back. So once, and then, and then I, when I actually worked that out, then I actually cut this out. I measured it and cut it all out, okay? So once I did that, I, I kind of had the chassis. All I then needed to do... Um, is I uh, opened up the uh, opened up the lid, and I um, I drew a hole around the I drew a hole on the inside of that um, bit of uh, bit of metal the U shaped bit of metal or the cradle if you like, so I knew where to use my reference point to cut the square out to to house the um, to house the 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 um, you know Weber tray or whatever the drip tray. All right? Now with this. You do need to put your hand underneath it when you're closing, just to lift the drip tray up a little bit to clear that, to clear that, um, to clear the lip on the on the Tetford hatch. Um, but I reckon it's a sort of a small, um, a small sort of um, issue. Uh, now the next bit about this was the manif the, this this the gas tap on the Weber, or the actual whoops the the. This guy here, the gas tap. So you've got a, um, you've got an injector and a manifold, and it is all located. It's all actually, it's actually mounted on the chassis of the barbecue. So what I did there is I got a piece of, I think that's three mil steel, drilled another hole through that. I put it up against the, uh, I put it up against the uh, this, the, against the manifold, and held the manifold in position and roughly worked out where I wanted to mount it. Now, I've used this three mil steel, so I just I just put a thread into the three mil steel so I didn't need any nuts and bolts and I'll have to cut them off and everything I'll, I'll, I'll cut all the, the, uh, the bolts off, the screws off and just lock tight them in and they should all be fine. But you just wanna make sure that that sits, take some photographs of how that, how that, um, how that actual tap is, the manifold is sitting inside the uh, or the the injector sitting in this bit sitting inside here because that's all quite loose you want to know how it sits in so you can replicate it when you put it back together again now you could probably go to gas fitter and you know a gas plumber or something like that and get it all signed off but mine's not mine's just pretty well mimicked the same way i've, I've done that the previous one that i've done works no problems i've had no trouble at all with it but keep in mind this is this is not gas compliant if you uh if you want gas compliance, you need to probably go to a gas plumber and get him to do it for you. But if you're happy just to have it working, then, you know, do, do whatever you like. But don't think I'm recommending doing this, particularly this bit, if you're not um, a gas a gas licensed plumber. Get it done. Um, I'll have one look at my work and uh, hopefully sign it off. 
So yeah, that's what I did there. And then once again, with a bit of liquid chalk, I marked in behind to get to get this angle right. And I just held it and basically took it apart, put it back together, took it apart, put it back together again until I got it right. Now I drilled two random holes, two holes in the metal where I thought it would be about right. And then I drilled right through the plastic again. So at the back of there, there's two original holes and there's now two new holes. Um, so they'll, and even if I put the barbecue back together again, you never know because you don't see those holes because you're not looking from behind it. So that's the way you mount that. Um, now, the only thing that I've noticed is it needed to, it needed to be offset a little bit. So in my case, I've um, heated it up with an oxy torch and I've put a kink in that piece of metal. Easiest way around it would be to buy yourself a piece of um, five mil, um, probably uh, I reckon five mil uh, aluminium, a uh, little piece of, you know, uh, flat bar, and just cut it to shape and um, and drill it and use it as a packer, and it's going to work just as well in between, in between the metal layer and the plastic which has the manifold attached to it. So um, then then all I did was. I measured back from the um, 45 mil, um, 45 mil here, from the edge of the um, the start of the track, if you like, or the start of the the runner there, where my finger is. I don't know if you can see. I'm a terrible video. Um, from there, 45 mils back, and I welded the angles on. Um, welded the angles on, 45 mils back on both sides and um, put into the barbecue. The only thing that, and then, and then I had to obviously uh, screw on the, uh, screw on the, uh, the slide, the, the slidey pieces, oops, the slide pieces that go into that um, 150 mil slide. You just basically line them up on the end, hold them in the steel, make sure they're dead straight or as good as you can get and then drill through and then mount the mount them in the holes. Then the only other trick with these things is make sure that you have those little guys, that little guy which lets you release it from the slide, uh, make sure they're up the right way because I put them in the wrong way and buggered a set and had to go and get some more and flip them over. So just make sure they're the right way for your slide. Take note when you pull your old barbecue out which way they are and keep the left one on the left and the right one on the right. Um, and that's really, that was all, sounds pretty, like, not much. Oh, and then this guy here um, is the piezo ignition. All I did, uh, that's a 16 mil hole I've had to drill. And you'll, uh, basically, that wiring there, that all just pulls off. That, that these, just, these just slide off, but that guy and that guy. Um, and you take him out of your original barbecue. And you'll notice I've had to cut a couple of slots um, at the at the top and the bottom of the or on, opposing on the on the on the hole because you'll see on the piezo they've got little expanding arms that oops little exp I don't know if you can see them little expanding arms that open up um, when you get into the hole and clip and clip it in position so he was sixteen mil uh, and the rest of it I basically used other uh, drill I think it was mainly um, six and uh, six and five mil. But if you've got a set of drills, you can go for it. Um, now, if you, I, I was thinking I'd get some of these made. I don't know whether I will or not, but um, if anyone wants, if I, get a, if I get enough people wanting to do it, I'll go to an engineer and get him to make them up because I'll tell you I'm over it. I've made two of them now and yeah, they were, um, yeah, it was, was fun to start with, but I'm getting a bit over it now. Um, the only other thing that you could do is instead of getting this big, big U-shaped bit of uh, steel bent up, you could just use uh, 50 by 50, uh, 50 by 50 angle at the um, at the front here, and a piece of uh, 50 50 by 50 at the back, and you could probably just mount that into a piece of 25 by 20 25 angle and just weld it up in a in a uh, frame and and then just line your legs up cut a piece of the metal out of the front of the 50 and away you go so um yeah i hope that gives you some idea of what i've done um because it is it is pretty bloody good being able to use that weber and um and 
and being able to uh, fold it up so in such a compact fashion, it's it's a ripper. And uh, yeah, as I say, the Q1, the, well, I don't know what I have said actually, the Q100, so the higher lid barbecue is the one that I've actually got installed in there at the, in my in my caravan at the moment. And uh, yeah, it, it's no drama. It, it fits, it still clears. Um, so yeah, happy days. The only thing you've got to do is lift up that tray. So I hope that's okay. Um, yeah, and then yeah, and then obviously at the end of it, you got to paint it. And what I have noticed is the one thing that I have noticed is this does get quite hot. But if I'm doing a pizza, I might leave this thing going flat knacker for oh, I don't know an hour uh, to get it really hot with a pizza stone in it. And that it does get hot. It's probably if you held your finger on it long enough, you'd burn it. But it's not sizzling hot. And I haven't burned a piezo, the plastic piezo or anything like that, but it does get hot. So if you wanted to, you could probably put a, some fibrous washes or something in between the legs. Um, yep, okay. Uh, hopefully that's all right. Good luck.